Hey guys, Scott here, and today I want to talk about the whole matchmaking improvements coming to Dead by Daylight. Um, this is part of the same developer update. I just focused mostly on the whole flashlight thing because that was currently the spiciest thing going on. And I'm going to be honest, I forgot to mention this part because of that whole conversation happening right now. But this is equally, if not more important. Actually, it is definitely more important uh, considering how rare flashlight saves and stuff like that are. Um, they're actually trying to address a major issue with the matchmaking system that they currently have, which is you basically carrying your entire team, but then still dying and then just getting, you know, a loss because of that. That's one of the biggest criticisms of the whole matchmaking system, the whole MMR rating thing, only based on escapes, nothing else matters. And this has been, you know, the biggest criticism of it, because obviously that does not tell the whole story. Now on killer, it makes a bit more sense to just go by kills because, you know, at the end of the game, if the killer killed everybody that you obviously that's a win. The killer just outperformed the people he was going against, and that was it. But Survivor is a lot more nuanced and complicated. There are a lot of scenarios where, you know, um, you have a teammate that's hooked at the end game. You have a guy on death hook. He's the only one with borrowed time. He's the one that goes and saves. He ends up dying, but because of that, the entire team gets to escape. So he makes a game-winning play, but he dies for it despite the fact he made the correct play and thus the game would consider him a Pepe loser because he just didn't escape. So now it seems like they're trying to address that a bit finally. So uh, they say with escapes being the win condition for survivors, dying heroically to save your team can feel a little anticlimactic. We're introducing team-based ratings to remedy this. Your rating will adjust based on not only your own performance, but the team's performance as well. Sacrificing yourself to save the team won't be nearly as punishing. So in theory, this is great. This is something they need to do. They just need to be very, very careful about this. This needs to only act as a bonus, not as a detriment, in my opinion. Um, because if it works as a detriment, you can be in a scenario where you um, get chased uh, for four minutes and you somehow manage to do two gens by yourself, but no one else does anything. So the overall performance of the team is still pretty bad. You only did two generators. That's not much. So if that works as a negative against you, then it's a problem because now you're getting punished even more for having bad teammates. Now, if it only works as a benefit or a bonus, then I think this is great and this is how it should work. And basically what that would mean is, you know, the scenario they described. If your uh, actions resulted in a personal loss for you, but it was for the greater good for your entire team, you should receive a, a bonus for that. Now, obviously, you're not going to get as much as if you escaped as well, but it should take into account the, you know, the efforts you put into making that game winning play. Now, the problem is, how do you detail what that play is? This is a pessimistic view, and I'm sorry, but based on their previous way of analyzing this, um, they they clearly do not understand what makes a skillful play. Um, the whole hockey analogy and all that stuff. They were rightly criticized for a very long time about it. They are really not great at identifying what a skillful play is. It's even more difficult to identify a skillful play automatically. Like a person watching a game can see what a skillful play is on the survivor side or on the killer side. But an a, a AI system dedicated to identifying that and then a, attributing it correctly, that is incredibly complicated and I don't even know how to do that. So... I'm curious to hear, I guess they're probably not even going to discuss it because MMR is very, very mysterious and they want to keep it that way. Um, but I'm really curious to see how or what the variables are going to be for this because I cannot really think of a way to automate this properly um, because there are just too many... Uh, what I think is going to happen, it's going to be something really simple. It, there's going to be like now a new clause where... If during the end game you save somebody and then you die, you don't lose as many points. I think it's going to be something really, really similar like that. Because if it took them two years to get just kills and escapes, it took them two years to get to that point. They're sure as shit not going to have an advanced calculated thing that determines a skillful play at the time, despite being a detriment to yourself. So I think it's going to be something really simple like that, where end game saves are now more rewarded or things like that. Because there's so many things that happen before the match gets to end game that might result in a player, you know, getting out early, but it still leads to a snowballing effect that wins the game. An example would be committing to a generator that's about to pop to break up a three gen and thus eventually having your team win the game, even though you die earlier. So there are so many little tiny things like that. You cannot possibly account for all of them with an automated system. It's just straight up impossible. So 
I think it's going to be really simple and just end game saves are going to be more of a or less of a punished thing for the survivor. That's my guess. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Um, finally, they're going to do uh, MMR decay, basically. So it's not really decay as much as it is that it puts you on hold from what I can understand. But basically, if you take a break from the game, your MMR will not be where it was when you left. It'll be at a lower point to help you get reacclimated to the game. And I think after a couple of games, it'll get back to where it used to be. So I don't think it's going to be like an actual MMR decay where you can go back to the base value, but it'll sort of put you back to a certain point, And then you just have to play a few games to get back to that point again, which I think is great. That should definitely be in the game. I'm all for that, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I'm really curious to see what they're going to do with the team-based ratings. It's a good idea in theory, as long as it's a beneficial effect for the survivor. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really curious to hear what they're going to even try to gauge as metrics for what that heroic sacrifice play is, because that can mean a million different things. Um, but that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.